was a great week for us. And, you know, ever since that, uh, I felt like when we lost at Western, we plateaued a little bit. But I think ever since then, we've just been uh, ratcheting up every aspect of it. I just think the guys are really dialed in to um, each other and what we're doing and, and holding each other accountable and just keeping everybody focused. And, and so it was a great weekend, capped off by, you know, a great come from behind win right at the end there, uh, getting it to overtime, then an outscoring minds in overtime against a, a really high caliber team. And, you know, we were talking after, it was certainly, I think, maybe the highest level game we've been a part of. You know, certainly you could make the case uh, Dixie a year ago in that semifinal game, too, was just as uh, equally as intense and uh, back and forth. But uh, it, was, it was a great game and uh, great to come out of it on top. And looking ahead to the, the regional this weekend, kind of a, a unique situation. You guys have number one seed go in, and, and you don't know really who you're playing. You got you got down to two teams. How do you how do you handle that, and how do you scout that? Well, what we decided to do is just treat it like a normal RMAC week where we have two teams on the weekend, so we just prepare for both of them and then let them play each other, and then we only actually have to play one of the two teams, but prepare like a normal week. And uh, so we're working on that. And, um, you know, it's a little tougher because you do get familiarity with your league, and so even though when you're playing somebody for the first time, you do have a sense of it, we just don't know their personnel or their coaches tendencies really at all. So um, so it's, it's, a, it's a little more in depth in terms of uh, game prep. But I think for the guys, it'll be a similar week uh, as, as normal. And uh, then we'll go over on Friday and see who we get to play on Saturday. And then Georgie and Jared, this really isn't too much of unfamiliar territory for you guys. You guys have tremendous success in junior college. I think somebody on Twitter or one of the social media said for you, Georgie, was four straight years of championships. Is this unfamiliar territory to you guys? Uh, I mean, we did it last year, you know, so we were familiar in that game, especially playing the same exact team we did. And it pretty much went to the wire just like it did last year, you know. So uh, we just stuck to what we knew and believed in ourselves. We've played in so many overtime games this season that when we, got, when we get that five extra minutes, you know, we really believe that we're going to come out on top. Yeah, this is um, me and Georgie's fourth year straight playing together. And uh, this is our fourth straight conference championship together. So, I mean, it's unfamiliar territory as in we're going to an NCAA tournament. And neither of us have ever played an NCAA tournament yeah. game. But I feel like we've both played in so many high-level games that had really high stakes that this is kind of like what we're used to now. So I feel like we'll be ready to go no matter what the stage is, no matter who it is against, just how we kind of go, you know? Well, I would just say we've been saying it all year. Rankings don't really matter, but I think it is a reflection of what this team has been able to do this year. And it's nice to be recognized for that, but it has absolutely nothing to do with the tournament. And so, you know, we just. Uh, we get a bye, and that's all we get, and we got to be ready to go on Saturday night. And, um, you know, whoever it is, it's a high-level team. North uh, West Nazarene has a great point guard that makes them go. And then Point Loma, you know, they got three elite scores and expectation of success. I mean, they lost in the national championship game the last time there was a tournament and uh, played nor uh, Northwest Missouri, who's been the dominant team in Division Two, right to the buzzer. So, um, you know, it'll, it'll be a big challenge, whoever it is. And, and uh, you know, we're excited about getting ready. Fun to kind of talk about it amongst yourselves and then kind of tell everybody to forget about it and just go play it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. We, we're kind of like so young on the team. We always talk about it like we don't, we don't know like how, we don't know how we're ranked that high, you know. That's how we always talk about it. We're like, man, like we have so much stuff to work on, like how we rank that high, you know. <laughs> And it's just like we, have, we see how much we can get better. So we're always just like we're going out there as another team. We're not going out there as like, you know, as ranked higher than the team we're going to be playing. I guess going along with that rankings, with, with winning, how much time do you guys take to celebrate? Is it just kind of like next day, all right, we won, like what's next? Or do you guys take a minute to like kind of reflect at all? Uh, I feel like, I mean, like our MAC championship, that's always like a kind of big deal. But as soon as like we get back here on Monday, you know what I mean? The coaches do a great job of just getting us refocused and 
right on to the next step. You know what I mean? Like that's like something that we wanted. It was one of our goals. First goal was to win the outright, uh, just the regular season. Second goal was win the RMAC uh, tournament. Now next goal is to win regionals and then we'll go from there. You know what I mean? So you take that moment to like realize what you did and enjoy it, but there's always another step. So it's just got to keep moving. needs to take over and kind of help those young guys along because, I mean, those kids have no fear at all. No. You know, they, they you know, might have been a little, maybe a little more nervous than usual, but what do you guys see going into this week? It just gets, a level goes up every week to kind of help the young guys who haven't been where you guys have been. Uh. I mean, they're they're used to winning now too, you know. So they they know the expectations, and uh, when they, they when we're out there, you know, and we're we're they're comfortable with us. So they ask us stuff if they don't know what to do, you know. They're comfortable asking coach. They're comfortable asking us, you know. They're not gonna go out there and mess up, scared to uh, you know make a mistake. I just feel like you said they have no fear. They go out there and they just play their games. It's like a silly question with the overtime games. I think you guys kind of mentioned that in hindsight, does, does it does it help? Like you're kind of saying, like going forward with this high pressure situation. I mean, yeah, I think getting those like overtime games early in the year kind of just gave us like that confidence. Like just like we said last time, every time we do end up going into overtime, it's kind of like, a, OK, hey, we've been here before. We know what this is. We know what we got to do. Like it's a five minute game. Did it like like it's kind of like it feels comfortable instead of kind of getting to overtime and being like, oh, crap, like it's do or die time. Like instead of that, like I feel like it's kind of a place where we're comfortable and it's a place where we know we have to perform and make something happen, you know? Yeah, I just think that, you know, anytime you're in a, a highly competitive environment, and you have success, it just fortifies what you're doing. And uh, then I also think there's something about this group. They really enjoy each other. And I think we've had a really good dynamic where, you know, we stay focused, but it's still kind of light and not too serious. And I think that's helped us through the whole thing. You know, we have these freshmen that are just having fun and seeing what college basketball is about. And, and uh, the veteran group that are, that'll get on guys when they don't, things right, don't do things right. But, you know, it's, it is just kind of a, a group that enjoys each other. And I think having it be that kind of a, more of a relaxed environment has really helped in late game situations and nobody wants to let each other down, but they're not tight about making a mistake. They're just out there competing. Do you guys credit that at all to, to like the time spent so much time together? It seems like that's almost a theme of the college basketball. Like, the teams you can tell that like each other and have them fall on the sidelines or seem to be the teams that are, are doing well this year. Uh, yeah, I mean, we definitely spend as much time as we can together, but I think it's just uh, the mutual respect between all of it, all of us, you know, like, we're all here to do one thing, and that's you know to do something great to go as far as we can. And uh, I think everyone being on that same page, you know, we all take criticism well. If you if someone's not doing something right, and you tell them it's not, you know, they're, it's not going to go one year out the other. They're going to listen, you know, and fix it. I mean, it's hard for me to say. I will say that part of my coaching philosophy or the environments I'm best in is when our guys are fully committed and focused, then that's usually where I'm at my best as a coach because I, I'm not necessarily the guy that's going to motivate somebody. I, I expect guys to be motivated and focused. And when they are, then we can just work on creating an environment where they can explore and figure out what's best for them within our system and understanding what it is. I mean, the teaching component is what I like. and. I think what I'm best at, and this group has just been so focused all year, there hasn't had to be that thing where we're trying to motivate guys or get them to stay focused or, or play harder. I mean, this group does all those things already. Um, and so then it kind of becomes that next level of teaching, which is the part I enjoy the most. And 
this group's been very responsive to that. And I think it starts with these guys. I mean, you know, they were both out at the fall and they were just correcting guys and teaching them on the sidelines and creating this expectations. This is how we do things here. And I just thought it made a huge difference for those young guys. One is they established themselves as leaders and then it also put pressure on when they came back <laughs> they had to execute to perform. <laughs> they've been on it for about a month about <laughs> doing things right. So I just thought the whole dynamic just played out well. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really, we just have really good leadership with our group. Yeah, I think so. Obviously, you know, some coaches come in, you know, they'll come into practice and it's like, I'm mad at the world and I'm just going to scream and yell. You guys seem to kind of feed off of just like he said, kind of a lighter nature, just the way that this thing's going right now. Yeah, no, um, I definitely feel like we, we give the credit to like the freshmen where it's due, but like for them to have that much confidence, it's not all coming from them. Like coaches kind of created this environment where like you're going to be held accountable, but if you do make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. You know what I mean? It's not like we're just done with, done with you. We're just on you, on you, on you. You know what I mean? He's he's allowed us to make mistakes and grow through those mistakes and he's done the same thing with the freshmen and so that's why me and georgie kind of feel like we we can do a good job of like coaching helping coach and helping like critique and stuff like that because he's made that environment where it's like a comfortable way like to critique not like a putting someone down ever it's always like a hey we can we can get better than that hey we can do better than that hey we can get better from this you know what i mean so that that environment that we've created has just allowed people to bloom you know what i mean like we've seen Christopher, Reese, Blaze, Trevor, all of them just play out of their minds, you know what I mean? Like as really young guys playing against grown men in their first year as college basketball players, like you usually don't see that from that amount of young guys, you know what I mean? So it's just been a great environment and we hope to just keep it going, you know? Hey, they're doing what we told them to do, and now we got to get back in to earn our spots back. <laughs> I mean, heck yeah, I, I missed seven games, and I was out there telling everyone what they were doing wrong, what they were doing right, and everything like that. So as soon as I came back, I knew for a fact I had to execute everything that I was telling them to do, because if not, then it's just empty words, you know? So it, it, it definitely was a, a, fun, a fun challenge, and I feel like we've all stepped up to the plate, and it's, it's come out good for us. Oh yeah, it's definitely a, uh, you know an advantage to us. I feel like because you know we we played there before, but you know we won there. Uh, I feel like we'll be pretty comfortable. All right, question of the week. Other than basketball, what's your favorite sport and why? Uh, I would say football, just yeah, because uh, I like watching it. I used to play it, so yeah, I'd say that. I don't know. I, I've, playing would be golf, even though I don't get to do it anymore. Uh, but uh, I'm a college football fan if, if you know, watching. <laughs> so. nah, yeah, I'd say football. I'm definitely an NFL fan. If, I had, if, I, if there's no basketball on, I'd watch football. And I played, so.